And our final presentation for today is a, uh, a group from Australia um, who together uh, had, uh, ha had a formative LGBT experience which inspired um, their different reactions to that, inspired their virtual reality-based project uh, that they're going to be telling us about today. Um, uh, too many to introduce them all one by one, so I'll just call Denoumont up onto the stage to uh, share, share their ideas. Many of us here today have at some point in our lives had to lie about our identities. For myself in the workplace, this first came one afternoon during a team lunch when a previous boss of mine made an offhand comment reflecting negatively on the validity of gay relationships. For the remainder of that lunch and the rest of my tenure, I felt the instinct to erect a barrier, one that was conditioned from being a 16-year-old boy having to hide his identity from homophobic high school friends. I felt that instinct to erect it again. Now, going forward, our interactions were marred by the need to cover up out of necessity for career advancement. From genders to activities and interests, I had to rewrite my own personal story. And I know many of you here will have had similar experiences. I know my boyfriend certainly has. Now, at that time, I was working at a small enterprise that had neither the HR budget nor the headcount to have any sort of diversity training. And when I raised this with my team here, we felt inspired to come up with a solution. So can I get a quick exercise here? Um, you guys can raise your hand or show your yes-no cards. Um, how many of you have participated in some form of LGBTI diversity training? Yep, <laughs> that's quite a lot. <laughs> now, keep your hands up or turn your cards if you participated in this training at an SME, a local SME. Right. <laughs> so this right here was the issue that we started with. How do we break through that cost barrier and uh, deliver an effective solution to foster uh, empathy and inclusion in workplaces such as mine. What we came up with was Denumont, a simple solution for, for, a si for firms of any size, a means of genuinely fostering empathy and inclusion through an immersive virtual reality experience that enables the user to feel what it's like to not be able to bring your whole self to work. Thanks, Kieran. Can I get another show of hands for any of you who might have shared or know someone who has shared Kieran's experience? Yeah, that's quite a fair few of you. And for you and for LGBT professionals around the world, it's unfair that professionalism has to come at the cost of personal authenticity. Change has to take place. But we can't change workplaces and make them genuinely LGBT friendly unless we change the attitudes of the people who make up these workplaces. Of course, measures already exist to try to address this, like diversity training. But the truth is, these measures aren't working as well as we'd like to believe. A Harvard study of 829 companies over 31 years found that diversity training had no positive effects on the average workplace. So despite the millions of dollars we're pouring into advancing workplaces to a more inclusive future, attitudes on the ground essentially are remaining static. So how can we spark this change in attitudes? Well, virtual reality technology, or VR, could be our answer. VR can help you see from a perspective that is usually impossible for you. And as a teaching tool, it is many times more effective than traditional teaching methods. Compare the 75% information retention rate to the 10% information retention rate of traditional methods like lectures or worksheets. And this is where our team comes in. We want to bridge that gap in understanding of the LGBT experience with a powerful technology 
that affordably and effectively lets you walk for a mile in someone else's shoes. We present Denouement, virtual reality training to promote LGBT inclusion. Now, let's take a quick look at an example of what you might see when you're strapped into that VR headset. So a cinematic will play, and you're confronted with a decision. If your manager asks you about your partner, what do you do? Do you tell her the truth and risk making her uncomfortable? Or do you lie and obscure an essential part of who you are? Denimore makes us all make these difficult decisions from the perspective of an LGBT professional. We face their daily dilemmas as they must weigh up how the choices they make in presenting their personal life might impact their career and their workplace relationships. Thank you, Nikki. Growing up as a child, my mother often told me that before you judge someone, walk a mile in their shoes. That message resonates with us here at Denumore. We believe empathy is the key to greater LGBT inclusivity in the workplace. Now, to facilitate this, we're in the process of developing two packages. The first, the Denumore package, and the second, the immersion package. Our first package, Denumore, is cost-effective, highly scalable, and best of all, incredibly flexible. Essentially, all we require from a user is a smartphone and access to a VR headset, which can cost as little as a few dollars. How does it work? Well, effectively, a user sitting anywhere, whether it's in a lunch break, at their desk, can essentially download the app in the iOS store, Android store, plug it to a VR headset, and watch a cinematic simulation similar to what Nikki discussed in the previous slide. Now, as you can imagine, the greatest cost we face is with the actual development of the app. This can be quite costly if we go with third-party providers. So we thought hard about this and realized that why not leverage our resources and our contacts to internalize these costs? And we have. We're in the process of developing a partnership with a Sydney University-sponsored VR reality hub. Now, our projections indicate that we can release a first prototype in three months available to the market and all your companies should you wish to join on board at no monetary cost. We're creating maximum impact at a nominal cost, something that historical training programs have failed to achieve. We've essentially disrupted this market. Thanks, Akshat. Due to time considerations, I want to conclude by introducing you to our incredible team. So on, on my very right, I've got Kieran, and our role for him is he will drive the key thematics of what Denouement will be, because he is an eminent leader of Australia's LGBT community. Akshat will drive our finance and our budgeting, and he'll create value-added partnerships for us. As for Nikki and I, we will drive the expansion strategy, each individually with extensive experience in both um, consulting as well as social enterprises. My name is Bill Chan. I'd like to thank you all for listening today, and I'd like to open the floor now to any questions. Thank you.